okay hello all welcome to this new series of tutorials on android and uh, in this we'll be going through various steps like how to design and publish your basic android app and uh, at the end i'll also navigate you through various steps on how to publish your app on google play store and uh, since android utilizes java api in first two videos of this tutorial we'll be visiting through some java basics okay this is what we'll be going through in java basics like firstly we'll go through java classes then variables methods loops conditional statements then arrays and uh, we'll also be visiting java collection api we'll be navigating through lists sets and maps and uh, in the next video we'll be going through oops concepts and exception handling okay so let's get started so Java is called object oriented programming. So what does an object means? What does an object signifies? So let's take an example for this. So consider a human being. Human beings have different attributes and behaviors like name is one of the attribute. Color is one of the attributes. We all have a certain name. We all have a color and uh, behavior like we eat we sleep we walk okay these are some of our attributes and behaviors and uh, what is a java class a java class is basically a template which is used to describe those attributes and behaviors which we discussed here like so our class human suppose we have a class human and it will describe our attributes and behaviors okay let's code it in java so in this tutorial we'll be using eclipse for developing java programs so let's create a new project so you can use shortcut alt shift n or you can go go to file new other just type in project and select java project click next give it a name java basics click next hit finish so there you go you have a new project created here okay we'll create a new package let's name it com dot java basics dot android hit finish okay create a new class You can give it any name. We'll give it sample class. Okay, or we'll give it sample object. Okay, so this is our simple class. And uh, first and foremost thing in a class is entry point. To every class there is an entry point okay and in a Java class the entry point is main so as we discussed in our human object uh, we'll use it here like first we can use string name int h these are our attributes and our behaviors can be public void eat and then public void sleep and many more so we'll discuss these methods and variables what are these methods and variables how the syntax is laid out so first of all let's navigate through variables so this is a variable the general syntax is it should be the type what is the type of the variable followed by the name of the variable and we can also give it a value like equals Ravi whatever name and this is variable of type string you can give string values like suppose name address anything which is in string and int age in age you will give numerical values like only numbers so we have whole lot of data types see 
these are the different data types that we have in Java. These are called primitive data types like byte, short, int, long, float, double, boolean and char. Okay. And this is the size. A byte takes 8 bits, short takes 16 bits, int takes 32 bits, long 64, again float 32, double 64, boolean 1 and char 16 bit. And uh, if you don't give them any value, these are the default values which they take. Byte will take 0, short also 0, int, long, float, they'll all take 0. And double and float are the variables which deals with decimal values. If you have any value which is in decimals, then you will use double or float. So, and by default, okay, I'll show you that thing. And every data type has a certain range, like suppose and this is the formula which is used to calculate that range let's apply it on byte and here n signifies number of bits a byte has 8 bits so it will come down, down to minus 2 to the power 7 2 2 to the power 7 minus 1 as n is 8 so 8 minus 1 is 7 so minus 2 to the power 7 will roughly come around minus 128 so it will be minus 128 to 128 minus 7 that is 127 so the range of a byte is minus 128 to positive 127 this is the range of values that a byte can store and similarly you can calculate it for others okay let's use all these variables we used int we can use byte the same way Similarly, we can use short. By default, a, numic a numerical value is integer and a decimal value is double. So, see well we are getting an error here type mismatch cannot convert from double to float because by default if you'll give any decimal value it is double and not float so the fix for this is either you can cast it into a float or just write f so here f signifies this that this value is a float and by this way we can assign it to a float variable Similarly, we can use a double variable. Okay. So, this is how the values are assigned. You can assign the value at the time when you create the variables or we can assign it later on. That we'll discuss in this tutorial. Okay. And the difference is in the ranges. Like double has a wide range than that of float as it occupies more number of bits than double c float uh, double here is occupying 64 bits and float here is occupying 32 bits now uh, what are methods suppose if you want to add two numbers okay let's take one more class name it addition hit finish write the entry point of this program main let's give it two variables int num1 give it a value of 20 and then int num2 give it a value of 40 now we want to add these two numbers first of all we need to create object of this class so how to create an object just type in the class name hit control space it will give you addition is our class name addition then name of the variable equals new new keyword is used to create object of a class new addition okay save it so what does this line signifies here add is a reference variable reference variable which is pointing to this object in Java, there are two memory spaces, one heap and other is stack. 
and all the objects are stored on heap so this reference variable is referring is referring to this object on heap new addition okay so to add those numbers simply we need to write we'll print print those variables like so to access these you have to use reference variable name dot dot operator is used to access all the attributes or methods of a class so dot you can see our two variables popped up here num1 which is selected plus add dot num2 okay just run this program you can run this by clicking on this run icon you can see 60 so suppose this time we had only two variables what if we want to add 10 20 or 30 variables so we will we be making 12 20 or 30 variables no right because that will be lots of code and memory will be consumed so for scenarios like this where we want to execute same functionality again and again we create methods so let's create a method this time for addition of two numbers so public int or by this time just give void void sum int num1 int num2 and inside this I just want this function to add num1 plus num2 oops give it a right name num1 plus num2 okay now we'll call this method instead so how to call that method just take out this line just add dot sum c just type s and it will show our method just give two values 20 plus okay let's say 60 so this is how our method is called now just run this program c 80 so now whenever we want to add two numbers we'll just call this method again and again so it will reduce a lot of code we won't have to code too many variables and it will also save memory so this is one of the purposes of making methods